Amen. Okay, let's go to Camille Motley. Camille, um, we're going to talk about misery and multiple miscarriages. Okay, you're, you're a young marriage. You had big dreams of having children and a family. And you suffered from multiple miscarriages. You got to the point that you were just tired of even trying to conceive. So you realized that, um, she said she realized she was expecting again at church because she had given up. And she said, I began to tell the story about how I conceived with Minister E. And she said when she went back and checked, she found out she was expecting. I was just telling the story. And she found out she was expecting and she brought to full term a little baby boy called Isaac. <laughs> so Camille, after having suffered miscarriages, what was it to find out that you were expecting and things were going well with your pregnancy this time? How did you feel? Well, first, I honor God. I honor you, Bishop. I honor you, elect lady. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for having me. How did I feel? Um, I was shocked, to say the least. I was absolutely shocked because, like you said, I had just given up. Um, and I had just gotten a new job. And so I was getting my career back on track. And so I was just gung-ho to, to, to go forward with my career. And like you said, you were going forth about how you got married and you were expecting uh, Emmanuel, Minister Emmanuel. And then I found out I was expecting. But then when I went to the doctors and saw that ultrasound, it was a glorious release mm -hmm. where my husband and I honored my husband on tonight. We laughed. And that's when the Lord dropped on my heart to name my son Isaac because we were both older. Um, I actually uh, had Isaac um, just a few months before my 40th birthday, so the doctors kept telling me these words, geriatric eggs and this and that, that just horrible uh, prognoses. And so when I saw, it, it was just, it was, it was glorious. I, I can't explain it. Okay. Good. Okay. Now you're excited, you've got this beautiful baby boy, and you're all excited, and then you find that cancer tries to cancel the dream. Isaac now is five years old, and now you're diagnosed with cancer. The doctor said that the cancer was very aggressive. Chemotherapy sessions drained you severely. One of your biggest goals was to really shield this from your son. So one of your greatest fears, you said, was that you would die in your sleep and you would leave your husband and your baby boy and not be a part to raise him or be a part of their life. So that was a great fear, being a mother, uh, five years old. Now, when you was giving the example, you said, I said I was having, was I having Minister E or Minister Joe? M Minister E. I mean, oh, because that's interesting, because Minister E, I was in my prime. I, was, I wasn't looking to have him, but he popped up. And so it's a good thing he turned out happy because I really wasn't happy for Minister E. I was. <laughs> Bishop was. I'm here. Can I just do a station now? That's why I thought you meant Minister Joe. When I, mean, I found out I was expecting with Minister E, I was. I, my mother wasn't here. My family wasn't here. I didn't know anybody but Bishop. And I can remember the difference when they called me because I had told Bishop, I said, something's not right. And I went, and when they call, and back during that time, they would call you. They take you, they do your exams, they call you back, and they tell you if you were or were you not. And so I remember the doctor's office calling and said, uh, Mrs. Owens, I said, yes, well, we called and let you know you're going to be a mother. I didn't say nothing. They said, Mrs. Owens, are you there? I said, well, yeah, what do you want me to do? That's what I said. He said, well, you're probably going to have to come in. So I said, oh, I do not want Bishop to know nothing about this. I said, God, why did you let this happen to me? I said, I don't want any children. I told you, Lord, three years. I'm going to be married six weeks. So I went home, and I tried to hide it from Bishop, and you knew his prophet. I don't know why he came home at his lunch hour. 
I put it on the calendar, and the calendar's in the kitchen way in the back. I don't know why he did that, and he don't probably know. He went in the kitchen and went straight to the calendar. He said, what is this on the calendar? So with him, with Minister E, I was not expecting that, so we went, I didn't have any balloons going up. I had dirt. <laughs> And you, but, told me, you told me not to tell nobody, right? That's a whole different story. We'll be at the rest of the night with Bishop. But with Minister Joe, now I was older. I wasn't expecting Minister Joe, but we were glad for him. I was like 42, 43 when I had Minister Joe. That's why I thought you got him mixed up in there. But when we had him, we were just as happy for Minister E now as we always have been. But anyway, let me get back to, I thought you got them mixed up. I thought you meant to say Minister Joe and you said Minister E, but okay. So the, uh, being a mother of a five-year-old son that you waited so long for, what gave you or did you have any peace to quiet your fears that you uh, had cancer, it was aggressive cancer, and you're caring, and now you have a five-year-old son that you've waited all these years to have? What do you feel like quieted your fears? One thing that quieted my fear was when my husband and I were back with you and Bishop in Bishop's office. You prayed for us and we stood up and Bishop, you said, do me one thing, make me a promise, Sister Camille. Promise me you won't fear. And you, and you made me shake your hand shake on it. Promise me, Camille, you will not fear. It's all right. And that was what carried me through. Amen. That's all right. Now, Camille, right after that, you went in, you went through your chemo, your treatments, everything, and the cancer was in remission. But as you're going through your healing process, then you're later diagnosed with stage three kidney disease. Now, the, the doctor said that the, your kidneys and your oxygen level was that of a 90-year-old woman. So you had to now go under, uh, you had to undergo multiple surgeries once you found out that you had a gene that was a type of cancer that ran in your family. So you got through the cancer, now is your kidneys. So now you're having to go through an even more difficult time to try to get recovery. So what at this time, I guess it's kind of, Hard, how did you have any normalcy in your life? How was there any, after this, how did you manage to have any kind of normalcy in your life? All I could do was rely on the Holy Ghost, rely on not fear, to not fear. I, I, I had to keep rehearsing that scene in my mind where Bishop, you made me shake your hand. <laughs> and the best I could do to maintain normalcy was to keep serving as hard as I could. Yes, she did. Now that she did. Now that she did faithfully. We never not saw her over there on that. I don't care what went on, she would have her little scarf on her head. Camille stayed faithful to serving on that instrument. She never stopped serving. She was faithful to the school as one of our teachers in the school. She never stopped doing that. She didn't rest or take any, any kind of rest that I can't do this, it's too much. God has not healed me. But that's one thing I have to give her credit for. She always stayed faithful to the vision and the house of God. Okay, um, uh, anything else, Bishop? Just real quick, Camille's, uh, Sister Camille's uh, testimony uh, brings about one very heavy, heavy statement. When you marry, you take on 
responsibility. But when you marry and have children, that responsibility is multiplied not by two, that is multiplied by at least 50. The pressure, she said something very, very, um, I, I want to say strategic, but she said something that applies so accurately. She said, my fear was I would lay down, go to sleep, and die in my sleep, and leave my husband and my child. Because once you marry, that is, you feel the pressure of marriage. Because now you have committed, you have responsibility, it is public, it is known. Then all of a sudden, when you have a child from that marriage, which is good, but the responsibility of this life, the responsibility of raising this life, and to feel all of that pressure, then she walks in the office and the Holy Ghost tells her, do not fear. The pressure alone from being that afflicted in your body, you have a child that you are responsible for, that life is on you. You have a husband, you have responsibility, you have financial responsibility. Dr. Owens, I don't know if people understand, how in the world do you make it without God? You cannot write your own story. There is no pen and paper that allows you to write out how your story is going. All these ladies, if we can use the term, are ambushed by life. That's why, and let me say this real quickly, and I'm all set. That's why I know why God called this ministry. It's called this ministry not for somebody to use another place to go to church. For this of what people have to go through that they're not able to go through by themselves. All right. Amen. And we thank God. Camille has been nine years. She's been cancer free. Kidneys are running good. And her son Isaac will be going into high school next year as a freshman. <laughs>